Okay, breathe. We're gonna get out of this. And we're gonna go home. This place, it isn't what you think. It's a cage. But we can help each other. He's a monster. You cannot trust him. I'm just a man. But I know how it ends. I don't care what he can do. He's not getting out. You thought you could win. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. Marvel Studios, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Experience it in 3D, February 17th. Get tickets now. Marvel, the MCU, is finally starting to hype up Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, which comes out in just under one month. We got a brand new trailer that gives away some more context with Scott Lang, Paul Rudd, dropping some crazy one-liners. I don't care what he can do, but he's not getting out. That is such a one-liner. And we have Kang, the Conqueror, played by Jonathan Majors, I'm just a man, but I know how it ends. They are really hyping this movie up so much. So in this video, we're going to go over all the most recent, up-to-date news information to do with Ant-Man 3. We're going to go over some potential leaky stuff to do with Kang. And we're actually going to break down who the freaking hell Kang is because I'm not the biggest comic book guy, but because of Ant-Man 3, I've been doing some research. I've been reading some comics to do with Kang the Conqueror in the Marvel comic universe. And it appears to me that Marvel may be changing some stuff up because Kang is a variant of Nathaniel Richards, yet everyone keeps talking about Kang variants when realistically, if you look up who Kang is, or if you've read any comics, Nathaniel Richards is the character and they're all variants of Nathaniel Richards and not actually Kang variants, but is the MCU going to dumb down the storyline? I don't know. But realistically, it's Nathaniel Richards who we are talking about. So, yo, what is freaking good, YouTube? What's you here? If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to never miss any of the Marvel DC pop culture based content that we do on this channel on a daily basis. If you could subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and let me know down below. Which variant of Nathaniel Richards are you most looking forward to? And also, if you could, check us out on Instagram at WashDew to see the beautiful face behind the beautiful voice. And also, if you could, check us out on Twitter at WashDewG. Right, let's get into this video. So, we're going to talk about Ant Man 3 predominantly, but also some low key season 2 things, as Jonathan Majors will be running riot during that season. So, who is Kang the Conqueror? He's not even Kang the Conqueror, realistically. So, Nathaniel Richards was born in the year 3000 AD of an alternate reality dubbed Earth 6311, or basically the Counter-Earth, that never went through the Dark Ages. Named after his alleged ancestors who had brought peace and prosperity to the planet, Nathaniel attended robotics school as a child an exceptionally bright student, basically a genius from the future. He was bullied consistently. When he was 16, a bully slashed his throat. It was during this time that Kang became obsessed with adventure, watching historical videos from his family archives. Nathaniel was particularly interested and fascinated with the Fantastic Four, a team led by a distant relative of his, Reed Richards. Nathaniel longed for an adventure. So, realistically, when people keep saying, yo, it's a variant of Kang, it's really a variant of Nathaniel Richards. Kang has traveled to many timelines. One of the first in which he takes the mantle of Ramatu back in ancient Egypt 
is another timeline. He becomes the Scarlet. If in the far future he becomes Immortus. There is so many different versions of Nathaniel Richards. And you guys know I'm transparent. I'm not the biggest comic book guy. I am realistically when it comes to DC and the Flash, but not so much with Marvel. So realistically, when people keep talking about Kang variants, they mean Nathaniel Richards variants. There is so many different variances of Nathaniel Richards. Kang the Conqueror being one of them, Immortus being another one, Iron Lad, Kang Prime, Ramatut, I believe that's how it's pronounced. You get my drift. There's many faces of Kang, but realistically, I think in the MCU, he will be, all the different versions of Kang will be referred to as Kang variants instead of Nathaniel Richards variants, I believe, until we get to, you know, the bit where they actually describe his backstory, which realistically should be coming in Ant Man 3, hopefully, because they will introduce Iron Lad. And multiple, and we know Rama 2 is going to make an appearance at some point. There's even a female variant of Kang, I guess you could say. There's so many freaking different variants, which is why there's reports of lots of different Kangs appearing. He Who Remains is realistically a variant of Nathaniel Richards. And Kang's just a freaking badass that is a variant of Nathaniel Richards, realistically. So hopefully this kind of makes some sense. Basically, his real name is Nathaniel Richards, and he's got lots of different aliases, lots of different variants of Nathaniel Richards, Kang Prime, Victor Timely, Iron Lad, Rama 2, Kang the Superior, Kang the Conqueror, Immortus. There's so freaking many different variations of Kang or Nathaniel Richards. I just wanted to clear that up because a lot of people keep saying they're Kang variants when if you want to get technical, they're actually variances of Nathaniel Richards. So in the most recent trailer, and recently Marvel has opened up massively, massively about Kang. And I don't think we know that much about Kang the Conqueror, which is a variant of Nathaniel Richards, because they're telling us so much about Kang, about Kang's chair, about how he's stuck there. They're even referring to the quantum realm as being locked up in a cage. There's a line in the most recent trailer which should have played before this video played if it allowed me to put said trailer there. But if not, I will have the footage overlaying anyway. So they've dropped a recent trailer. It's pretty short, but the context is pretty cool. So the new trailer opens with Kang. Warning, Scott Lang and his group. The quantum realm isn't what they think. We've always known that line. But then he refers to the quantum realm as a cage. But as we know from the trailer before this and from what Kevin Feige has said, for some reason, Kang the Conqueror is stuck in the quantum realm, which they're referring to as a cage because... Janet Van Dorn basically destroyed the chair of the multiverse of travel so he would be stuck there and he's been trying to get the power source for said chair since she wrecked his time chair if you want to say that that's why Janet knows so much information about him Kang is seen walking alongside the ant family presumably joining them on their quest, the footage plays out and Kang emphasizes that he and the heroes can help each other, which I do find kind of funny because the Ant family will figure out how to get out there pretty fast. But Kang has been stuck there for such a long time. So in the trailer, Janet warns Scott that Kang is a monster and Scott cannot trust him. So they are really hyping up Jonathan Majors to be the overall big bad. But I keep coming back to that line. I don't care what he can do, but he's not getting out. That is such a sick line. And the way they're putting empathy on there being two different personifications of Kang the Conqueror. You've got Kang the Conqueror when he's got his whole suit on and he goes blue. And I think that's the reason they've done that. But then he's got the humanized side of him. And the actor Jonathan Majors did say he wanted to humanize Kang, which is interesting. Because there's a line in the trailer, I'm just a man, but I know how it ends. Does he know how it ends? Now, we know this version of Kang the Conqueror, i.e. a variant of Nathaniel Richards, has the war scars all over him. Now, I made a comment on the video to do with Ant Man 3 before this, saying that he doesn't even know who the Avengers are. He doesn't know that Scott Lang Ant-Man is an Avenger. Now, I do read the comments. A lot of the comments are like, yo, that's because he's traveled all these different timelines. 
He gets confused and all this kind of stuff. I don't know about that. Maybe he's the last surviving, the last surviving variant of a Kang to a certain degree. And maybe that's why he doesn't know that Scott Lang is Ant-Man because he's like, yo, you the one with a hammer. He kind of seems somewhat a bit confused or a bit crazy. Maybe the quantum realm has kind of made him crazy to a certain degree. But throughout the trailer, the short trailer, he tries to reassure Scott he is just a man. But this is just an attempt to humanize himself and I guess you could say overshadow the fact that he knows how everything ends. The trailer's spot, it's like a TV spot, it's not technically a trailer, it's called Home. It's very, it's a very captivating trailer. It's the most intimidating hype trailer. If you ask someone like me and I've been doing content like this for at least four years, Kang Nature is shining through as he is likely threatening to trap Ant-Man and the rest of the family in the quantum realm if he doesn't seem to help. So they make some agreement that Ant-Man is to get said component that he needs to power his chair so he can give everyone the time back and so he can go out and wreak freaking havoc across the multiverse. But we know there will be a double cross. I don't want to keep going over said plot leak because every bit of information that comes out about this movie, whether it be from Kevin Feige, whether it be from insiders on Twitter, whether it be some exclusive interviews in Empire magazine, it just tells me that the plot leak we've gone over is 100% true. But towards the end of the trailer, it looks like Scott no longer wants to help Kang and negotiations seem to have broken down because there's a picture, a scene, I'll put it over now if I can, where some people seem to think that Kang's time traveling chair has broken because to be fair, I can see the context. I can see what you're talking about. It does somewhat look like his chair is broken down, but this is towards the end of the movie where the Ant family are fighting Kang, but there's going to be a separate fight when most of the Ant family have peaced and Scott Lang is going to have a one-on-one -on -one fight with Kang and somehow not die. Because as Kevin Feige said, this is not the finished version of Kang the Conqueror. And I have seen a bunch of people tag me in the theory that says this version of Kang the Conqueror is really Kang the Warrior who has been through many kind of decimations, many kind of timelines where he's essentially wiped everything out and that's why he's super OP. But my question is, even if he had done all that, because realistically, is Kang a good fighter? Sure, but Kang can travel through time and space and all this kind of timelines, I guess you could say. It's via technology. He's not like, you know, crazy strong naturally, but he would have learned how to fight. So he isn't like the OP, he isn't the end game kind of villain. He's the end kind game villain because of what he can do, not necessarily the power he realistically has. Kang is going to f*** up the MCU. It's just fascinating how Marvel keeps showing so much stuff that it looks like we already know how the movie's going to end based on the trailer. So the Loki finale, essentially we've seen the fracture in the MCU timeline combined with No Way Home. It allowed us to see... He who remains. He essentially told us how everything was going to end. He said he had beaten every other variation of him. I don't know if I believe that. I think there will be. And I think this storyline with Kang is going to be so much better for people who aren't as knowledgeable with the comic books. Because realistically, people that don't read the comics don't know about Kang in the comics. I think you're going to have a much better time. And I would include myself in that category. Sure, I've read some comics for research purposes but i don't know that much about kang's history sure i did a bit of a kind of intro of who he is we know he's a time traveler from the year 3000 we know he's essentially nathaniel richards and there's lots of different variants of him but we don't realistically know what is going to happen in this movie outside of the plot leaks that are 100 true but we know it's a multiversal let's kidnap cassie lang in order to get Ant-Man to agree to do some crazy time heist because we know his end goal. Feige has told us the end goal now. He needs Scott Lang, obviously, to shrink down his size to steal some component, but we don't know what said component is. We know the component has the power to make the time travel in multiversal chair run again, like work again, but we don't actually know what it is. So it's going to be very fascinating on February the 17th to find out what Kang's true agenda is, even though all the plot leaks confirm everything thing is true, the plot leak doesn't actually specifically say where he has to go for said component. Most people have the presumption that it's going to be the quantum nexus. Most people presume that it's going to have something to do with 
Shang-Chi's Ten Rings and Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan's bangles? We don't know. That's just assumptions. But it is fascinating that Marvel is hyping the shite into this movie because it is, I won't be the first person to say this. After a disappointing phase four, this is a make or break movie for Marvel. It has to break a billion dollars. Why? Because this is to set the tone for Avengers Secret Wars. It's to set up Kang's Dynasty. This movie literally ends at the start of Kang's Dynasty. You know, technically a spoiler. But that is what happened. So, also, Jonathan Majors will have a massive part to play in Loki Season 2. There will be multiple Nathaniel Richards. Loki Season 2, rumoured to include multiple Nathaniel Richards, would be the technical way, but this article... Here says Kangs. According to a new rumor, Jonathan Majors Kang will have multiple variants show up in season two of Loki. Well, it kind of has to. So we know the way Loki ended. He was terrified because he knows what's going to happen. It's done. We freed the timeline. We found him. Beyond the storm. A citadel at the end of time. He's terrifying. He planned everything he's seen everything he knows everything it's complicated okay but someone is coming countless different versions of a very dangerous person and they're all set on war we need to prepare take it easy you're an analyst right what division are what? you from what are you talking about who are you what's your name boots on the ground now archives who are you He who remains warned him that variance is him will be much worse. So it was almost like Loki had gone back into a different timeline, hence why Mobius, etc. didn't know who the hell he was. So it is interesting. So in this article here, it says, Paul Rudd, Scott Lang will have to go up against none other than Kang the Conqueror, a warrior version of he, of he who remains, which I guess is more technically true. So let's break down what this is saying. So insider Daniel RPK aka rpk news so i would say here daniel rpk is very credible when it comes to trailers trailers time dating back to avengers infinity war avengers endgame something i will say about any inside scooper i would never pay for your patreon not even once but he isn't as reliable and i think a lot of the scoopers a lot of the insiders they're not as reliable when it comes to vetting information about plot leaks, etc., Marvel don't do external test screeners. So Marvel tests their movies, sure, inside Disney and Marvel employees. So I'm not too convinced about what Daniel RPK is saying here. But yeah, sure, there will be multiple Kang variants in Loki Season 2. I do think that's true. Jonathan Major's recent film, New Scenes. Yeah, sure, I believe that's true. Jonathan Major's recently filmed more as a Kang variant of Loki. This season will have time travel. Okay, cool. And then Daniel Richman added some tidbits about up and coming season explaining how the show will introduce a new concept called the time loop. Loki season two to introduce a new time concept called the time loop. It is the source of the TVA's power. They use the energy from the time stream and absorb it. It is important to note that the information here is rumored and is not confirmed from either Marvel or Disney. Okay, that's kind of confirmed. Will Loki see the real Kang? We don't know, but it's it's interesting. Uh, technically, he who remains said he could take out all the other Kang variants or Nathaniel Richards variants. So I'm sure Loki will get to meet the real. Kang the Conqueror, because it has been confirmed that Kang the Conqueror will be the main Jonathan Majors villain, if you like, going forward. So I do find that fascinating. Kang's secret weapon revealed. What is his secret weapon? It's the time chair, essentially. That's it. That is it. So it is interesting how Loki season two is to introduce a time loop which powers the TVA. And Ant-Man 3 is to introduce the multiversal travel space travel ship, aka the time chair, which is how Kang can essentially go wherever the frig he wants. That is quite an interesting, I guess you could say, parallel between the two. Kang the Conqueror is quite possibly the biggest threat the MCU has ever encountered, with multiple versions of the villain, each more terrifying than the last. Known as He Who Remains in Loki, the new and profoundly dangerous version of Kang intends to up his game, triggering an effort from Scott Lang, Hope, Janik, 
Hank and Cassie to stop him before it's too late. Time, it seems, is Kang's secret weapon, and he intends to use his unique understanding of it to conquer worlds far beyond the quantum realm. So I guess you could say the time chair is the MacGuffin. It's uh, the time chair Italy going to be the Infinity Stones of the multiversal saga. Did someone steal the comfy chair? No, someone stole the power source of said chair. And that is why he has baited Cassie Lang into this device and it pulls him in. But what is the actual source of the chair? Will it be in the quantum nexus? We don't know. Find out next time on the War Shoe Show. Because even the plot leak itself doesn't state what the actual 100% confirmed source of the chair will be in the MCU. So, this is all the latest and greatest information about anything to do with Ant-Man 3. Hopefully you're enjoying these videos. It seems like you are based on the analytics. So, if you do have any video ideas, just let me know in the comment box down below. Sure, I will be covering the Marvels, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and much, much more to do with the MCU going forward. But don't worry, the DC content will still be there. And we're going to try and ramp up the MonsterVerse content when we can get some more information about Godzilla vs. Kong 2. So like always, guys, any feedback will be great. Any comment down below will help the algorithm. Any constructive criticism is always good if you do it in a respectful manner. I try and reply back to every single comment if I can. And also if it sanctions a reply. So like always, guys, check us out on Instagram. That was you. Check us out on Twitter. What's you, G? And I will catch you in another video very soon. Catch ya. Later. <laughs>